Isaiah Simmons back? Yes. You yep. expect so you expect him to play this week? I do. Anyone else? Uh, Nick McLeod? Not practicing. And Kayvon. I know he's been on there. Sorry. Right. Yeah, he'll be good. There's a report that Jalen Hyatt said in the summer that you guys should trade him if you're not going to use him. How did you guys get past that? Never told me that. So he's in. Jalen is probably one of the closer guys I am with on this team. Um, you should ask Jalen. Anyone else? What makes you have confidence in him despite the fact that you haven't deployed him a lot yet? Well, again, he's. He has his role in personnel, um, Slayton, Neighbors, and Wandell. I've covered this. Uh, they're the starters in half personnel. He has a role. Um, when his number's called, he'll be ready to go. He's in good spirits. Jalen and I and the receivers talk every day. We meet a lot, have a lot of confidence in Jalen. Jalen knows that. Um, so when he has a chance to make a play, um, go out there and make a play. I only ask that because. The fans have seen his explosiveness in game. You used him last year, the Arizona game, yeah. the New England game. So they are yeah. asking. Hey. I'd say we have, I, I think we have four explosive guys. I think Wondell is explosive, Neighbors is explosive, Slayton's explosive, Hyatt's explosive. Again, they all have roles. Those other guys play a little bit more than Jalen, but uh, when Jalen has his opportunity, um, I certainly have a lot of confidence in him. What kind, of role Slayton, what kind of role does Slayton play in that room now that, you know, Shep's gone? He's, I mean, he's the elder statesman. I mean, yeah. off the field, what role do you feel like he plays with the younger guys? Yeah, he, he's, he's a good leader in that room. Uh, they meet a lot. The quarterbacks meet a lot with the receivers. The receivers spend extra time together. You know, they do a lot of dinners together. Uh, it's a really close-knit group. Um, he's been productive here uh, for a while. Slay has. Uh, I think the quarterback has a lot of confidence in him. He has the confidence in all the guys. Uh, but he's, you know, he's been around. He's been around the block, around here, uh, understands things. Confident player, uh, good leadership, uh, veteran. That's that's done it for a while and, and been productive doing it. I thought you found the balance between you obviously want to get the ball down the field, right? But maybe the way they're playing you or the way the games have played out, yeah. you haven't been able to do it as a play caller. What's been your approach to that? Uh, again, I think we talked about that. You you call them if they play a certain. You know, coverage that gives you an opportunity to throw them, you let it go. Had a study, uh, had a, one of our guys do a study in the analytics department uh, the first two weeks, how many balls have actually been thrown 20 yards or more in the league, thrown and caught 20 yards or more, not run and catch. Uh, winning teams, it's been three and a half a game. So again, we, I think we threw three of them last week. Um, if they're there, you'd like to throw them. If not, you throw it underneath and you, and you hope for some catch and run. There's a lot of big catch and run plays the first two weeks of the season. Uh, but you want to attack certainly downfield if you can. And if they give you the appropriate coverage and the right look or the right matchup, you can go ahead and let it rip. Why do you like commission a study like that? What, just to confirm what you think? Or like, I'm just curious what yeah, no, I mean, I, we, we do a lot. I do a lot of them just, just to kind of get trends throughout the early part of the season of different things that are going on or you know, maybe why some teams are a little bit more successful, some are less successful. It's not just that study. It was just that's what I asked for this morning, thinking about it. Um, you know, you watch, you watch games throughout the league, see how teams are winning or how they're playing, and, and some you know, don't throw the ball a lot down the field and you know, score some points, but it's catch and run or it's a screen pass catch and run. Other teams, I just wanted to see how many times that was happening um, and then you look at yourself and say, okay, how can we do it better or not do it better? Um, you know, I think it's just you continually try to self-evaluate and see what you can do better um, to make sure you're giving everybody a chance. Do you say to Daniel, though, at some, sometimes, I guess, given this situation, hey, just throw it up. Let's, let's let those guys try to make a play. Uh, I mean, if it's the right look. I mean, today in a team meeting, we watched, I don't know, 30 turnovers from the league uh, this past week through all different teams. So there's a lot of quarterbacks that just throw it up and there's three guys back there and it doesn't turn out so well. Um, there's some that there's great individual plays by players, you know, they catch it in between two guys. So I think there's a time and a place for it. And if, certainly if he has the right look, we, you know, I think he'll throw it. Um, and if he doesn't, you know, we don't want him to force things into, you know, a bad look and you know, turn the ball over. Colton said yesterday that the kicking Sunday is a competition. Is anybody ahead at this point? Well, one more day, um, one more day. So, um, you know, they've both done a good job. We'll, we'll finish it off today and make a decision.
But do you, I mean, is it strictly what you see this week? Obviously, one guy has more experience than the other. Yeah, is I think that, that plays a, a part into it. Yeah, I do. I think it plays a part into it. But, you know, ultimately, it's out here at practice, see how we do. But certainly, there's that plays a part in it. When you're setting out to do your game plan, is the first thing you do just identify, like, the game records on the other side? And if a guy like Garrett, you'd have to just base everything based off of him? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Uh, certainly, you do, because it's a matchup league. And... Other teams have really good players, and other teams have really elite players. And it's hard to neutralize elite players. It really is. You have to have a plan for it, um, whether it's formation-based, whether you know he's seen as many different looks as he can see since he's played. You know, whether it's with backs, tight ends, formations, and you know he still manages to make a lot of plays. Uh, it could be a really good corner. It could be a good cover linebacker. It could be an offensive lineman. That you, you know, there's. Uh, you know, matchups are, are part of the NFL, obviously, big matchups, um, you know, interior guys, offensive line, defensive line, you know, guys like Dexter, you know, it's hard to have a plan for him every single play um, because they are so good. But you certainly you certainly have to take account into their elite players. And he's one of them in this league. When you go up against, uh, you've seen a couple now, the, the defensive coordinators that are, have been in this league, they have a reputation, they have a resume. Sure. How do you guard against going too deep? You know, how far back do you go with Schwartz finding tendencies? Maybe not you personally, but do you have your guys kind of unearth as much as possible? I just think as a, as a coach in this league, you, you put as much preparation and time into it. So um, I go back quite a ways. Um, you, know, you dig as deep as you can dig, dig just to make sure you're doing your part and preparing. You know, that's, you know, that's your job as a coach to make sure you study the tape. You see if you can find any sites of tendencies, whether it's last year, whether it's at Buffalo, whether it's at Philadelphia. I mean, there's a lot of tape on, on Coach Schwartz. The players are different. You see what is consistent uh, situationally, if you have any tendencies. And, and he does a great job of self-scouting. I've known Jim for a long time. He's a very bright coach. But you certainly look as as much tape as you can look at. Just off of that, do you how aware are you that another person, another coach, might be looking the same for you? you yeah, know, you I, I think they all do. I think all all coaches all coaches do that. You know, they have a lot of good coaches on that staff. A lot that I'm I've either worked with or have a relationship with. You know, Ken Dorsey's on that staff. I think the world of Ken. I think he's an exceptional coach. Uh, when he was with me at Buffalo. And so we've been together for a long time. He knows stuff that I do. I know stuff that he does. You know, Coach Schwartz and I have competed against one another. It's, you know, people that have been in the league long enough, there's a, a history there that you go back and you, you make sure that you're, you know, dotting your I's, crossing your T's as much as you can. Two more, two more. And a good coach and play caller. Dorse? Yeah. Uh, he's very smart. He sees the game well, uh, understands, I would say, every area you need to understand to call plays, uh, protection schemes, screen game, drop back game, route concepts, man-to-man -man beaters, blitz zero beaters. He understands defenses. He did a great job with the quarterback. Um, adjustments. He's, I think the world of kind, I think he's a heck of a coach. Anything else? Yeah, you touched on this <laughs> this summer. Um, when we brought it up again after the game that you're kind of referencing him for input on play call stuff, like what he wants to run. I'm so, I'm, Malik uh, oh, referencing yeah. play call. We talked about the summer. I guess how rare is that for a rookie? I know that's something you talk about you want to do with your receivers, but specifically for a rookie, especially that early in the year. Yeah, I would say once they're, they're on the team, you have a, a history with them in training camp. You get a feel for the player. You meet with them every day. Um, you get a feel for their understanding of football. I and mean, Malik is very bright in that regard, not just understanding where he needs to line up, different spots, different positions, but he also has a good feel of how defenses are playing him or certain players are playing him. And he has good information he did at camp. That's where you build the trust uh, is during training camp and all the reps. So when he comes over to me and says, hey, this guy, when I get this split, he lines here, you know, think about this. You know, they're out there. You trust your players. They see it. You can look at a tablet, but they're right out there. So if they're giving you good information, you use it. Um, if you go through a couple games where the information is not very good, then you, you don't use it. But he's, uh, he's an instinctive, instinctive football player. Um, and he's done a good job since he's been here. I assume he did it with other guys in other places too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, team. absolutely. Well, we were just talking about this yesterday. B. Marsh stopped by. Um, you know, got a great relationship with Brandon. And you know, it was with him and, you know, we've, Developed that relationship through coach and player, then it's 
you know, taken on from after I left Miami. And we were talking about that because I asked him for a lot of input when he was on the field. Um, and a lot of it I listened to, most of it I did because he was an instinctive player. He understood the game, he understood how he was getting played, um, and he understood the matchups uh, that we talked about. So, uh, you know, you have those good players, Gronk, I was with Gronk. You know, they come over the sideline, this is how I'm getting played. Um, this might work. Uh, quarterbacks, you know, that's, you, the players work really hard at this, the coaches do, and, you know, it's a, it's a team effort.